Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this time now to begin our program. I'd like to introduce uh, Michaela from Michaela from the Girl Scout Troop 50313, who will be posting the colors, and she'll be taking over the mic. Audience attention. Color guard attention. Color guard advance. Guard post the colors. Color guard honor your flag. Please join us in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. At this time, we'd like to do the post everlasting uh, for the last year and a half uh, up to this time. George Corrales, Larry Covington, Charles Fish, Rochelle Gambrell, Malin Godden, George King. James Manweiler, Weiler, Stacy McGee, Joseph Perry, Willie Petty, Wallace Rogers, Gary Smith, Leo Sullis, Thomas Webb, Melvin Gatton, Danny Hayes, John Kennedy, Eugene McGowan, Leroy Scolari, Carl Y, Lee Wise, Isaiah Turan, James Brown, William Carlson, Carlin, sorry, Richard Clark, Bernard Dover, Lester Geist, Hayward Jackson, J. McCandellis, Catherine McGaw, James Ogan, James Paris, Jerome Scanion, Donnie Scruggs, Everett Stinnett, Theodore Sucheki, Perry White, Rodnick Kennedy, Theodore Ted Jackson, Louise, Louise uh, Buddy Isbell, Timothy Murphy, William Grossi, Gordon Poupe, John Sticer, James Dial, James Everly, Dana Castro, and not but not least, Carmen Camarillo. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to announce those who brought wreaths, and I'll call up your name or organization. Feel free to bring up your wreath. American GI Forum, 107. We have American Legion Post, 125. American Legion Post 211. Ladies Auxiliary 211.
Disabled American Veterans, Chapter 91. Lompoc Elks. Daughters of American Revolution. American Legion Riders, post 211, and Marine Corps League, Marine Corps uh, Women's Association. That concludes the laying of the reef suite. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today's events. She comes to us from Washilia, Alaska. Wasilla, Alaska. She entered the Air Force in 2001 after many assignments abroad to include a tour in the Republic of Korea, a tour in Guam, and then Germany. She eventually ended up here at Vandenberg Space Force Base, August 2022. At Vandenberg Space Force Base, she is the senior enlisted airman for the Space Launch Delta 30. She serves as senior enlisted leader and principal advisor to the commander. She maintains and secures $16.5 billion in resources contained within 118,000 acres across Vandenberg. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure, Chief Master Sergeant, Mosley. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you all so much for this opportunity to share some thoughts with you as we come together on this hallowed ground to remember and honor the brave men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to our great nation. I wanted to begin by reflecting on the history of Memorial Day, how it came to be, and why we're here. Today's Memorial Day was initially known as Decoration Day, unofficially founded shortly after the Civil War, a war which claimed more lives than any conflict in U.S. history and required the establishment of the country's first national cemeteries. Decoration Day was instituted by General John A. Logan, the leader of the Grand Army of the Republic, a Union Army Veterans Association. General Logan proclaimed May 30th, 1968 as a day for the nation to revere and remember those whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land by decorating fallen soldiers' graves with the choicest flowers of the springtime. Eventually, these remembrances were extended to honor all Americans who died in military service dur during both war and peace. And in 1967, federal law established the holiday's official name, Memorial Day. Four years later, in 1971, Congress went on to declare that Memorial Day would be observed on the last Monday in May. Some 150 years after the declaration by General Logan, this day is considered an unofficial beginning of summer across our nation. Family celebrations, vacations, picnics, parades, and ball games are enjoyed. 
These activities, though likely far from what the originators of Memorial Day envisioned, are the result of what courageous men and women have fought for. Liberty, humanity, and a better future for all Americans. Let us not take for granted these basic freedoms we will enjoy today. Memorial Day also holds special significance for the community of Lompoc, which maintains a rich history deeply intertwined with the spirit of patriotism and sacrifice. From our earliest days, citizens of Lompoc have played a vital role in our nation's defense. This community has witnessed the selflessness of heroes who have emerged from these streets, these schools, and these neighborhoods. Brave men and women answering the call to duty and defending the freedoms we hold dear. Over the years, Lompoc has proudly sent forth generations of sons and daughters to serve in our armed forces. They fought valiantly and with honor in every conflict, from the trenches of Western Europe, the beaches of Normandy, and throughout the Pacific Theater. The many who spent a Cold War on the Korean Peninsula and those who endured the jungles of Vietnam and the deserts of the Middle East. We remember those who fought for freedom in Afghanistan and Iraq, and those who died serving in multiple conflicts around the world in between, and those who gave their lives in time of peace. Today, people will gather in communities like this one, from major cities to small towns, but I would contend that it's smaller communities like this one where these remembrances have a more profound effect, because it's small communities such as this where losses are most deeply felt. Today we remember known Lompoc heroes that went forth and paid the ultimate sacrifice. Heroes like Elbridge Badger and Longino Rios, who died fighting from the battlefield trenches of Western Europe during World War I. We remember Private Manuel Maldonado, the oldest Lompoc man to die in combat during World War II, and his brother-in-law, Roger Cruz, who was the youngest. We remember Corporal Carmen Carrillo, who was just 20 years old when he was reported missing in action during the Korean War. Through years of recovery efforts, his remains were found, identified, and just last month, after 72 long years, he was brought home and finally laid to rest. Never forgotten. We remember Lieutenant Walter Pantomaroff, a helicopter pilot, and Specialist 5 Robert Gilliam, a helicopter repairman, both killed in action in Vietnam. We remember Chief Petty Officer Rodney Lee Wolfe, who died while serving aboard the USS Trenton in Barcelona, Spain. We remember Lieutenant James Search, who lost his life during the bombing of the U.S. military barracks in Beirut, Lebanon. We remember Sergeant Mitchell Lane, killed while executing a valiant attack on an enemy cave complex during Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. We remember Captain Derek Argyle, who along with four others gave his life in a plane crash on Memorial Day while supporting Operation Iraqi Freedom. These hometown heroes remind us that freedom comes at great cost, a debt for which we cannot repay other than to simply reflect on the profound sacrifices of those who laid down their lives to protect the values that we hold dear. Their heroism and dedication have shaped the very fabric of our nation. We must never forget the ideals for which they fought, the liberties they defended, and the indomitable spirit that unites us as Americans. In paying homage to those we've lost, we also acknowledge the incredible sacrifices made not only by our brave service members, but also their families. Lompoc has always been a community that understands the weight carried by those left behind. We stand united in offering our support, compassion, and gratitude to the families of the fallen, whose strength and resilience are an inspiration to us all. Gathered here today, let us renew our commitment to honoring and supporting our veterans active duty military personnel and their families. Lompoc stands as a testament to unwavering support we offer to those who have served and those who continue to serve. The city is home to vibrant veterans organizations, memorials that serve as poignant reminders of sacrifice, and events that bring community together to express our gratitude. On this Memorial Day, we humbly honor the fallen heroes who have left an indelible mark on this city and our nation. Their memory will be forever etched in our hearts, much like the names forever inscribed here and on the Lompoc Valley Fallen Warriors Memorial, and the names that will indeed be added in years to come. May we carry their legacy forward, striving to be a community that embodies the principles they fought for, freedom, liberty, and justice, so that may we, we may enjoy the freedoms that we will no doubt enjoy 
on this unofficial beginning of summer. Thank you for your city of Lompoc, for your unwavering support and commitment to our heroes. Together, let us remember their sacrifices and work tirelessly together to build a future worthy of their selflessness. May God bless you all, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Before we go on to uh, TAPS, I want to give a note out. In your program, it says doves. The doves that are going to be flying today is going to be on its last flight. Buddy Isabel, the one that does uh, the doves, had passed away. So these doves are going to be the last flight uh, we'll have here in Memorial Day from now on. So with that being said, uh, G. Myers, you got the floor. That concludes our ceremony. We just want to open up that 211, um, hosting a, a chicken, and Post 125 has a barbecue at the Veterans Memorial, Memorial Building. Have a good day. Safe travels. <laughs>